This is Fox News alert. Gun battles and explosions as Islamic militants advance through Iraq, getting closer and closer to Baghdad. And here in Washington, the Obama administration is reportedly considering sending special forces to Iraq. Other U.S. troops have already arrived in Baghdad to provide security for our embassy. For the very latest, International Business Times reporter Aaron Banco joins us live from Urbo, Iraq. Good evening, Aaron. And tell us the latest on the ISIS and what's going on in Iraq. Hi, Greta. Um, you know, it's been interesting. The past week or so, the Sunni militants associated with I ISIS have been on their way down toward Baghdad, and they actually reached the capital there a couple of days ago. And I think we all thought that was going to be it. That would be the last big fight and that they would forget about the north. But today, just south of Kirkuk, which is in Iraqi Kurdistan, just across the border, we saw Sunni militants that we think were associated with ISIS attack the town of Bashir um, and actually ended up killing six soldiers. So tensions are running really high here in Kirkuk, especially with thousands of refugees from Iraq fleeing to Iraqi Kurdistan. And in terms of uh, who's got the upper hand at this point, is the sense that uh, ISIS is on the retreat or they're going full speed ahead? What, uh, who's got the upper hand tonight? You know, I think that ISIS has the upper hand in Iraqi Kurdistan right now, especially in areas around Tikrit and Kirkuk, and now we're seeing the attack in Bashir, and just yesterday there were three bar, uh, car bomb explosions that went off in Kirkuk that the Peshmerga or the Kurdish military think were related to these Sunni militants. So, you know, I think they're coming back with a vengeance. Aaron, thank you. Thank you. So the big question, what should or can the Obama administration be doing about Iraq? Is sending more troops the answer? Former UN Ambassador John Bolton joins us. What a mess. Well, it is a mess, and I think the, uh, the, the basic cause is the absence of any American leverage over the al-Maliki government. I thought it was very interesting that Secretary Clinton said in your interview that al-Maliki had failed in his responsibility to put together a unified uh, Iraq. I, I completely agree with that. And that's one reason why I wouldn't do anything to aid the al-Maliki regime. It is functionally a puppet of Iran. Uh, and I think the conflict between ISIS and the uh, Maliki regime is analogous to the Iran-Iraq war uh, of the 1980s when Henry Kissinger said, it's too bad both sides can't lose. Well, I don't, I don't know how, how Iran can lose in this because they've aligned themselves with al-Maliki in Baghdad, and they've aligned themselves with uh, ISIS, ISIS, the coming out of the Syria and headed down to Baghdad. So both they've got two teams playing against each other here. Well, I think the Iranians have potentially have ISIS in a nutcracker. They've got Assad on one side and Maliki on the other. Uh, I, I think this attack by ISIS, well planned and well executed to be short so far, the uh, question is whether it's sustainable, and if these 3,000 ISIS fighters are in Iraq, it means they're not in Syria anymore. So what happens? Give me the scenarios, the, uh, the possibilities. Well, here's one thing that's not going to happen. Baghdad is not going to fall. If ISIS goes into Baghdad, the streets will run with blood, but they will not conquer it. The areas that ISIS now dominates in Iraq are the Sunni areas. Uh, but the country is 20% Kurdish and 60% Shia. And what al-Maliki is doing now is creating a new Iraqi army. And I, I think this conflict, as in Syria, could grind on for quite some time. So what happens if we're having this conversation two months from now? What are we looking at? Well, I think that functionally uh, Iraq is, is being partitioned. And, you know, the debate has often been one Iraq versus three Iraqs, the, the Joe Biden scenario. That, that's the wrong debate. There are already two Iraqs. The Kurds are functionally de facto independent, and they're not coming back in and, voluntarily. And, and the Kurds are building up their pipeline into Turkey and onto the Mediterranean. So they, they, they're being very shrewd and smart about this. The Kurds, their Kurds have got their eye on the future. And the Sunnis understand that. That's why ISIS has allies from the tribal uh, and militia forces in the Sunni territories. But that alliance isn't necessarily going to last. Fatal not to negotiate something, a status of forces agreement that would have let us stay a little bit longer. I realize George W. Bush set the first one in, but uh, President Obama didn't seek to extend it or, or get some special deal. He wanted out the, the key issue of immunity from prosecution for American forces that was said to be the hang-up. He could have gotten, I think everybody believes that. I think it was a pretext. He wanted out, he got what he wanted, and now we see this. And so now all, I mean, so Iraq was all this heartbreak and blood and 
blood lost and money lost? Well, I think we squandered a lot of opportunities, but the issue for the United States today is not what our interest was five or ten years ago. The interest, the question is, what is our interest today? And I think the real interest America has uh, is to take out the dominant threat that we face in the Middle East, and that's the Ayatollah's regime in Iran. That ought to be the focus of our policy. Well, not if we're negotiating with him, over the, trying to figure out what to well, do with Maliki. That's not going to happen. It's not, well, exactly. But, you know, the Obama administration doesn't often take my advice, or maybe ever. All right, Ambassador, thank you, sir. Thank you. And you saw former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton go on the record. So what does our political panel have to say about our interview? Find out next.